observance of Memorial Day. Now, as is customary, we now invite all veterans to come forward and assemble here in front of the monument in solidarity to those veterans we are honoring today. All veterans, please come forward. While the veterans are assembling in front of the monument, we wish to thank the scouts for their participation, especially for their help in the memorial observance. Our cold block, block, uh, bottled water will be available at the VFW tent at no charge, and scouts would be going around with water. Day. So on this Memorial Day observance, let's remember and remind our co-workers, neighbors, friends, and family members that those who died while in harm's way were young Americans who had lives that were just beginning. Cut short so the rest of us could pursue our dreams. We will now have our national anthem presented by the Brandon High School Band under the direction of Russ McMartin. <laughs> and doing our invocation this year is the pastor of North Oaks Church, the Reverend Steve Brown. Uh, by the way, uh, Reverend uh, Brown's dad was a Purple Heart recipient during the Korean War. Reverend? Would you bow with me? Gracious and merciful God, gather here this morning to remember all those who have fallen in battle while serving this country. Many brave men and women have given their lives through the history of our country to protect us from danger and harm. We also remember all those who sustained injury and in mind or body in the course of their service. We salute all those who are serving or have served in the military. Please continue to use their sufferings and sacrifices to advance the cause of freedom and peace in our generation and in the generations that follow. We thank you for all the men and women who continue to serve so courageously for our nation. We ask that you would bless them and keep them and their families, that you would make your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. Would you lift your countenance upon them and give them peace? Thank you that in our nation today we are free to worship, we're free to pray, we are free to speak, and we are grateful for those who died to ensure these freedoms. We do not take them for granted, and we understand how quickly these freedoms can be taken away. Would you grant us an increased awareness of the spiritual battle that we're in? Help us to stand strong in you and for your purposes in bringing peace and goodwill among men. We thank you for the freedom you have given us and for the price that was paid by our Lord Jesus Christ so that we could live free. We remember today the cost of it all, the great sacrifice for freedom. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. For I pray it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Reverend. Well, now we usually we have a vocal uh, presentation, and in the past we had a choir. However, last year, uh, Miss Vicki Mick volunteered her services and uh, her talents in singing appropriate songs. Uh, this year, she's volunteered again, and she wants to sing Amazing Grace and Somewhere Over the Rainbow, and that's to be accompanied by Joe Gates. Vicki? Thank you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. When we shining as the sun. We've known last days to sing God's praise. Then when we first begun, Thank you. God bless you all. And Joe is also a veteran of Vietnam, so I God bless all of you. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star, and wake up where the clouds are far behind me, where troubles melt like lemon drops. Way above the chimney tops, that's where you'll find me somewhere over the rainbow. Bluebirds fly, birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? If happy little bluebirds fly above the rainbow, why then oh, why can't I? Thank you. God bless you all. That was very nice, Vicki and Joe. At this time, we're going to have our Avenue of Flags presentation by Lori Delappy. Good morning. My name is Lori Turnbull Delappy. I'd like to welcome you to the Ortonville Cemetery and the 39th anniversary of the Avenue of Flags. This year, we have 700 full-size flags along our roadways, with 519 <coughs> small flags on veterans' graves, and 17 VFW auxiliary flags. 
Without the many volunteers who donate their time, our display would not have been possible. I would like to thank all the volunteers, Candy Allen, my co-chair, the VFW Post 582, the cemetery board, the cemetery ground crew, and all those who have helped us all year long. I'd also like to thank the Boy Scout Troop 139 for standing guard overnight, Cub Scout Pack 531 for assisting with water distribution, and Girl Scout Troop 76460 for your continued help throughout the year. The Brandon High School Band, the Lions Club, Michigan State Police, Oakland County Sheriff's Department, Groveland and Brandon Township, our Ortonville CERT team. This would not be possible without all your help. So as we gather to honor this day, please remember the American soldiers who have fought and lost their lives while serving our country. Please pray for those who also continue to serve and protect. Please also at the end of the service, please sign the Veterans Memorial book over here. It's located right here in the front. And then if you could also please join me with my 31 favorite words, the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Lori. Now is the time for our guest speaker. Now our guest speaker today is a native son of Ordenville, Justin Quisenberry, a former captain in the U.S. Army. He grew up here in Ordenville and graduated from Brandon High School in the year 2000. After high school, he attended West Point and graduated in 2004, being commissioned an infantry officer. He then attended the Airborne and the Ranger schools and subsequently served eight years of active duty. Justin was deployed to Afghanistan three times, first time as a platoon leader with 173rd Airborne, then as an executive officer with 173rd Airborne, and lastly as a company commander with 101st Airborne. He left the Army in 2012 and returned to Michigan where he and his wife now own a horse farm, and he is also raising four children. He's presently employed by General Motors. The topic of his speech today is remembering those we lost. Justin? Thanks, Ed. To be honest, I'm not sure I should really be up here today. And I get that same feeling every year come Memorial Day. I think to myself, maybe this year, maybe this year I won't march. You know, I, it's hard to describe why I think that every year, but it's a, it's a tough thing to march. You know, we, we gather at the town hall, then we, uh, we walk down the roads and we come here like we should. Problem is, as we're walking, there's a band playing, there's flags waving, there's people on both sides of the road saying, thank you for your service, and, and clapping and, and hollering about. And it feels, doesn't feel right. It feels uncomfortable. Because <laughs> right? today's not about us. Not at all. Today's about the, uh, the gentlemen on this wall and the flags and the gravestones that are throughout this cemetery. That's what today is for. And uh, when people say, thank you for your service, I know they mean well. But uh, it's hard to describe just how strange and uncomfortable we feel, right? It's, it's hard to put my finger on why we feel that way, right? But if I were to pick one word, I guess I would say guilt, right? We all deployed. We all went to war, all these veterans here, right? We all went knowing that we might not come back. And yet, for those of us who are here, we came back. And some of our friends didn't. We know those friends and we think about those friends. We don't know why they didn't come back, but we did. And there's a, uh, there's a lot of guilt that, uh, that sticks with us, sits on our shoulders and on our chest, that we carry with it our whole lives. And then on Memorial Day, the one day where we're supposed to think about them and not us, that's the day where we walk down the street and everybody waves at us and says thank you 
it's uh it's tough it's tough i think most veterans would agree with me that if we had it our way we would still start at the town hall we would still walk our way to the cemetery we would just do it when no one's looking maybe we'd use the sidewalk right we'd get here and then uh, largely at the cemetery the events would be more or less the same right we would pay our respects in the best way that we know how now that's just me imagining the, the way I would prefer and probably the way you would prefer. But I know that's not realistic. And that's also not fair because the rest of the community, the families and friends, they lost people too. They want to be here too, right? So they deserve to be here. So it's not up to me to say that they can't. I'm just trying to explain why we feel the way we do and why at, by the time we get here, there's actually more veterans up here surrounding this monument than there actually are walking down the parade. That's how they feel. That's how we feel. Please just understand that. Now, that being said, if there was one thing I would change about Memorial Day, this is it. And by the way, we're changing it right now. Uh, if there's one thing I would change, it was this. By the time we get to the cemetery, we do everything right. We sing the national anthem. We pay our respects. We do roll call, amazing grace, taps, 21 gun salute. But you know what we never do? We never actually tell the stories about those soldiers who we're thinking about in our head. Right? We say their names. Maybe we look at their gravesite, we say a prayer privately in our head, we think about them, but we don't tell the stories. We don't, we don't share our experiences about these soldiers. And if we don't do that, their memory and their legacy, they can't live on. So we're going to do that today. And I'm going to start by talking about two people. <clears throat> First one was a young man who fought in World War II. Uh, a handful of you probably know him. His name was Matthew Mercino. He's from the Ortonville, Oxford area, and after war began in Europe, he, uh, he eventually joined the Army as an artilleryman. After a brief bit of training in the United States, he uh, sailed to England, where he lived briefly and continued training and preparing for the eventual invasion of Europe. Once that invasion began, he made it to France, through Normandy, and then continued to fight his way through the continent, eventually being present at the Battle of the Bulge and continuing on to Germany where he and his peers brought down Hitler's Third Reich and delivered victory for the Allies. Incredible story. Incredible story. But what makes me proud about my grandfather is not what he did in World War II. It's what he did after he came back. You see, he survived. His name is not on this wall. But when you come back and you survive, boy, it sure is hard to know what to do once you come back. Right? Coming back after a deployment, after you've seen what you saw, it's disorienting, it's confusing, it makes you angry. And you wonder, how am I going to live in this world still? It's easier when you have an example of someone who's done it before you. And for me, that was Grandpa Marcino. He came back home, back to his hometown. He, uh, he got married, had seven kids. A handful of them are here today. Oh, and then uh, he got a job, very modest, regular, good job. And he worked at it, and he lived a very remarkable life for the next seven decades. Along the way, he loved his family. He loved his town, his community. He loved his friends. He loved Tigers baseball. He loved uh, hunting. He loved fishing. And most importantly for me, he taught one of his knucklehead grandsons that even though you feel awkward about marching in a Memorial Day parade, that's what we do every year. We march in the parade. That's what we do. I, uh, I feel blessed to have had Grandpa Marcino in my life. And uh, I feel blessed to have him, my whole family, and this whole town, this whole community. It's such a unique thing that we have here. I know I'm related to about half of you, but in reality, I feel related to all of you. Right? Everybody feels that way in this town, right? It's, we pick each other up when we're down. We take care of each other. We work together, right? And it's an incredible place to be. And I've only ever felt that one other time, and that was, of course, in the Army. In the Army, again, whether it's the entire Army or just your small unit, one way or the other, you're a member of a team, a tribe, a group of people who live and work together and would do anything for each other. And I was lucky enough to have two of those in my life, the Army, in my hometown. Most people don't have even one, but I have two. And typically those worlds don't ever intersect, not at all. But for me, it happened one time. And that brings me to my second story. 
in July of 2000, correct me, in uh, April of 2007, I was in Italy with the 173rd Airborne getting ready to deploy to Afghanistan. It was going to be my second deployment to Afghanistan. And uh, during some downtime after work, uh, I went to the base cell phone store. I was there in line with a bunch of other soldiers, and I, uh, I was buying minutes. We all were. You buy minutes, you load them on your cell phone, and then you go home and you call your loved ones you know, before you deploy. And that's what I was doing. There's a few people behind me having a conversation. Then even further behind them, I, I heard a voice. I didn't recognize the voice, but he said, Michigan? I didn't know what he was talking about. So I, I, I ignored it, but I kept listening. Then I heard him say, Ortonville? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on? I said, I, I'm going to keep listening for sure. He said, Brandon High School? I said, all right, all right. Somebody's talking to me. I, I turned around, and sure enough, uh, Joe Miracle, BFC Joe Miracle, also from Ortonville, went to high school with me, a couple years behind me. He was there, and I, I just couldn't believe it. What a, what a coincidence. What a, what a unique experience. Someone from my hometown then ends up in the same unit as me. We run into each other on the other side of the world, getting ready to go yet even further to the other side of the world. We talked for about five minutes, ten minutes, exchanged pleasantries, exchanged phone numbers. We said we'd call each other. And uh, I remember thinking, well, once we get back from Afghanistan, we'll, we'll swap stories. Maybe if I'm lucky, we'll, uh, we'll march in the Memorial Day Parade in Ortonville together. That never happened. Uh, Joe Miracle was killed three months later in Afghanistan. He was... Uh, deployed in the Kunar Valley, northeast corner of Afghanistan, pretty rough area. And uh, his job was, uh, he was a gunner for a Humvee. Humvees at the time were up armored, very thick armor plating on the front side. The windows were all bulletproof, uh, which meant that once you were inside a Humvee, there wasn't much ability to fight back if you ever needed to, right? Most of those people were more or less locked inside. There was one guy in the Humvee who was responsible for fighting back. That was the gunner. He stands in the turret, through the roof, he manages the machine gun, and he's the first and last line of defense for that Humvee and all of the vehicles in the convoy. On that day, July 5th, 2007, Joe Miracle's convoy was ambushed. Joe did his job. He stood tall. He manned that machine gun. He fought back, and he gave his boys a fighting chance to make it through the kill zone of that ambush and survive to fight another day, which they did, all except him. And one other guy. For his actions, Joe Miracle was awarded the Bronze Star for Valor, and of course the Purple Heart as well. And I never got to call him after the end of the war. Instead, his name's right there, and I'm right here. We came from the same town, we were part of the same unit. We deployed from the same place to the same country with the same job. We were both infantrymen. In the same circumstances at the same time, yet I came home and he did not. And that's enough to drive a man crazy. I know everybody out here who's a veteran feels it too. We've all been there. We've all come back. And our friends didn't. We always ask ourselves to the day we die, why, why did I come back? Why not Joe? I don't know the answer. But the least I can do is share his story. Well, I've told two stories today. One about a man who laid down his life so that others could survive. And another about a man who helps answer this question. I survived. What the hell do I do now? Grandpa Marcino's answer to that is, you just live your life the best you can. You march in that parade every Memorial Day. And uh, when you get the chance, tell the stories of the men who couldn't be there. Us telling their stories helps them continue to live and their legacy to survive through us. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Uh, I was reminded to inform all veterans if uh, it's appropriate to hand salute, even if you're not in uniform. Um, so I just want to be, give you a reminder on that. Now we will have the reading of Flanders Field by John Wodarki. He's our post chaplain. John?
think of it. In planter fields, the poppy flow between the crosses, row on row. That might that mark their place and in the sky. The lark still bravely singing. Fly. Fly. <coughs> Scarce heard amid the guard, guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from calling friends we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If we break faith with those who die, for us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' field. Thank you very much. We will now do the laying of the wreath, and uh, today's uh, guest will be Neil and Robin Laughlin. They will do the wreath. Amen. That was very quick. Okay. Okay, now we will do the honor roll of the war dead in this community, and it will be read by our commander, Dennis Hoffman. Good afternoon. I guess it's still morning. This day here is the day that we honor the veterans that are on the wall back there. And uh, we have uh, Civil War veterans, John Tucker from Williamsburg, Egbert Smith, he passed, died in Chattanooga, and his brother Warren Smith died in Chickamauga, and Abraham L. Perry Jr., he was in Cold Harbor, Virginia. Our World War I veterans, Frank Scott, USA Army, Ben Richmond, U.S. Army, and Roy Hartwig, U.S. Army. Our World War II veterans, our Vernon D. Pletcher, Army, Leon Abram, Army, Lou Flood, U.S. Army, Jack Hickey, U.S. Army, Floyd Hubble, U.S. Army, Tom H. Livingston, U.S. Army, George Marsh, U.S. Army, Thomas Tier, U.S. Army, Robert B. Turnbull, U.S. Army, and Roman Radarki, U.S. Army. The Korean War, we had one Bernard Ausnehmer, he's the United States Marine Corps. In Vietnam, we have uh, three, they were all uh, high school students and graduated. Uh, Tom Sermon was a year ahead of me, and Tom Sutton and Mellon MacArthur were good friends of mine. We graduated the same year. Tom played football, and so did uh, James T. Sutton. Melvin MacArthur, his family had a big farm out on Seymour Lake Road. And all three of them were uh, killed in Vietnam. Now, Thomas, or Tom Sutton, he only had, I think, a week or so left before he was to come home. An enduring freedom, Joseph Miracle, Afghanistan. Thank you. And at the end, following the last, the final benediction, the citizen would like all the veterans to stand in front like you are now. And I have clipboard with get the names of them. They want to take a picture of all the veterans for posterity. So if you can bear the heat just a little while longer after the benediction. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Okay. Uh, rifle team, start your assembly. 
We will now have the rendering of military honors by our VFW Post Firing Squad. Immediately after the rendering of military honors will be the playing of taps by the Brandon High School Band. Uh, Bugler is instructed to commence as soon as the veterans are finished in their final salute. Heavenly Father, may your grace, mercy, and peace rest on our world, our nation, our state, our community, upon all of us, especially those who served and sacrificed. I pronounce this benediction through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who suffered, died, and rose again. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. This concludes our ceremony today.